Okay, thank you. It's, it's great being here again today for part five of five. Um, part five of five on the uh, essays and proofs of Guatemala. This will take us from 1953 up to the very latest uh, proofs and essays. So we'll, we'll continue where we left off last time. And we're, now we're in 1953 with the national anthem issue. These are the two gentlemen who wrote Guatemala's national anthem. And you have dye proofs of the vignettes, both in a sepia color as well as a, a black and, or gray, grayish color. In 1953, uh, as in many other years, there was a, a national fair. And these stamps were printed by the Wright Banknote Company of Philadelphia. We don't know who, they, who designed them. So the, the cluster on the left are the actual issued stamps ranging from one centavo to one quetzal. And on the right, you start to see some of the die proofs. There are quite a number of die proofs. Most of the die proofs show the complete uh, design. Here's one that only shows the, the frame. And these are cropped. These are large die proofs. And the paper is, a pr is pretty big. So sometimes I'll crop them for the sake of the presentation. Uh, again, in the same set, we see a, a 15 centavo die proof uh, cropped. Notice the different colors, the horses being blue instead of black. The um, Odeca issues, um, there, were, there was a lot of work in preparing those. Uh, on the left, on bottom, you see a photographic essay prepared by a Tipografio Nacional. And another photographic essay by the uh, government uh, printing works in Vienna. The design is very different from the one ultimately chosen. The essay by Tipografio Nacional is much more similar, but if you'll see the, uh, how Odeca is laid out, that's very, very different. Well, uh, eventually they were produced by Staatsdruckerei Wien in Vienna, Austria. And what they did was they made four color trials of each of the three values that were issued. They issued a one, two, and four centavo. But uh, with these color trials, they issued little sheetlets. They actually perforated the sheetlets Uh, here are some designs that ne never came to pass. Uh, the words on them are pro caratera. It would seem that these were, were to be used for fundraising for the construction of the roads uh, leading to this particular uh, church. So in one essay, you see a temple at the Escopilas with the road. This is the road they were trying to build to make this church accessible. And again, these are semi-postals. Uh, very few semi-postals came out of Guatemala, including these, these didn't come out. Uh, but here's one with uh, Jesus and the globe as well. These came mounted on a card. If you look in the upper right corner, you can see the card on which these were mounted. Along the same lines, again, trying to finance that road uh, to um, uh, Equipulas. Uh, here's a two Quetzal essay showing a crucified Christ with a temple at Esquipulas, the sun over the mountains and roads. So here you actually can see the connection of the road passing through other small towns. In 1955-56, you had the um, soccer anniversary games going on. Uh, these were designed by Arnaldo Chivari. Uh, if you were to look very closely, I don't think you can see it here. In the imprint, you'll often find the letters C-H-Y 
almost all stamps designed by Shivari have this CHY. And again, we have color trial dye proofs of these, very similar to the ones that were issued, but in different colors in some cases. Well, in the 1956, there were a set of stamps issued celebrating the work of the Red Cross. There were actually three different types of stamps. One was for regular postage, one was semi-postals, and in the semi-postal stamps, you can see the two values, the value for postage and the value for the charity. And finally, air semi-postals. These uh, are the only air semi-postals issued for Guatemala. Uh, on the right is a photo essay. Uh, the back of the essay is hand-stamped DLR for Delarue, Thomas Delarue and Company. And it's noted that this was a photograph taken December 3rd, 1954. In 1956, they celebrated the liberation of uh, Guatemala, and uh, here are the stamps they issued. Well, before they issued the stamps, uh, there was just a beautiful, beautiful pen and ink essay, very large, 210 millimeters by 262. The denomination was one centavo. It's inscribed Dios Patria, Homeland God, Libertad Verdad, Freedom Truth, and Justica Trabajo, Just Work. Also, El Sol de Democracia, Al Hombro La Victoria, the Son of Democracy, Illuminated Victory. It's dated the 3rd of July, 1954 to 55, just like the issued stamps have those dates. And the artist's signature is a Dario H. Paz, you know, this is one of those cases uh, I managed to purchase this uh, essay, but I've never seen another. That, that's really true of most of the essays you see here. Uh, they're unique. And one of the very nice things about essays is that they exist in, in the world and that you never know when you're going to find a new one. So again, that airmail issue of 1956, uh, here are some die proofs. These did not come to issue. They were engraved by Arnaldo Shivari, but not adopted uh, to stamps. Now, Shivari continued to engrave stamps until 1971, but he stopped designing them. Uh, here we see some color trial plate proofs of that same series. Uh, again, they were, uh, they were produced, these essays, by Strauss Drockerai in Vienna. Some were left in their original state, some were pasted to some hand numbered cards. Uh, these are color trial proofs. They're not really mentioned in the literature, and these may be the only sets in existence. These are a little smaller than the issued stamps. And these cards tend to be numbered. Uh, this card is numbered one to five and then 11 to 14. And here's, here are the missing numbers of that same set, six to 10 and 15 to 18. And again, remember the last number I mentioned was 18. Here's number 19 to 24. So this is the very complete set of these. So here, and again, liberation issue of 1956, uh, the same stamps we've been talking about. Here are some full-size color trial proofs. The last color trial proofs you looked at were a little smaller. These are full-size. And some of the colors are pretty close to what was issued and some are rather different. Uh, then in 1956, they celebrated the life of Carlos Castillo Armas. And here are the stamps that were issued. And again, the Staatsdruckerei in Vienna 
uh, issued these uh, color proofs. And there were quite a number. They're all issued in the same denomination, 35 centavos. They were painted, they were pasted on two cards and they're not mentioned in the literature. And we believe these may be the only such in existence. Then in 1959, the uh, president of Honduras and his wife visited Guatemala. We don't know who designed this. We do know that they were printed by Taller Nacional de Gobados. And here's a photographic essay, which is um, actually, it's a much clearer image than the stamp that was issued because these are actually actual photographic paste ups. The design is very, very similar. I'm just looking for any design differences. Um, the details in the uh, symbol, the Honduran symbol is a little bit different, I see. And of course the essay doesn't have any imprint. Uh, in 1962, the set was ordered from the Austrian State Printing Works. But the stamps weren't issued because the president of uh, Guatemala, Miguel uh, Igadoras Fuentes, uh, was overthrown. So these, uh, these are imperfect essays that were then perforated. They come in as many as five colors. They're surface printed. And the central design shows President Igadoras uh, with the other person's name. We'll go through that a little bit. Here is Igadoras with President Luis Somoza of Nicaragua. President Veleda of Honduras and Limas of El Salvador, all with Igadora. The El Salvador military headquarters. President Veleda of Honduras. President Echandi of Costa Rica. President de la Guardia of Panama. And the eighth cent here is President Lopez Mateo of, of Mexico, President Ruiz Cortines of Mexico, Cardinal Spellman, at least he's not a, not a president, a Cardinal Spellman of the United States, President Pardo of Peru, and finally, President Eisenhower of the United States. Now, let's see, this is 1962. So Eisenhower left office in 1961. Then there was a, a special overprint uh, reading uh, five centavo, primo congreso, de congreso de Cent Central America y Panama, Guatemala, diciembre de 1962. Um, it's reported that this stamp was prepared but not issued for political reasons. Only one sheet of 50 is said to have reached private hands. So here you see a block of, if, if only 50 ever existed, this is four out of 50 or 8% of the total issue. And again, uh, a, another one in that set, unreported in the literature, and finally, in, in a gold color, also really unreported in the literature. During this, I just wanna make a comment. Around this time, uh, Guatemala, their, print, their security at their national printer was rather poor. A number of stamps escaped that probably should have been printer's waste, but escaped into the philatelic market. I've actually been busy buying up some of these, trying to get as many examples as possible. So in the 1950, uh, they issued a set of semi-postals for the Red Cross. Here's the full set as issued. And they had some essays and trial printings. This is a little bit of a tricky one. Um, the one centavo as issued is on the bottom of the slide. The Strutz Druckerei Rien imprint is 15 millimeters long. 
in the essay, it's only 13 millimeters long. Here are some more essays and trial printings. Uh, the one and the four uh, were never printed, but you can see the variety in colors that were part of these color trial proofs. More, more of the same. Now here's something that I purchased very recently and don't know enough about. I, this I added to the collection within the last month or so. Um, what I do is each time I find a new essay or proof, I um, add it to my uh, scans of essays and proofs. I write it up in a, um, in a, in a large document because eventually I'll want to publish this within the Guatemala handbooks. But here, here's a progressive dye proof of two one Quetzal designs. Um, it seems to celebrate a park in, a Chichi, in Chichi Castanango, known colloquially as Chichi. And here you see the progressive dye proofs on the left, and you see uh, examples of the completed um, uh, dye proofs. The, these two completed dye proofs, it's hard to see the difference between them, but uh, they, the one on the left has a darker blue and a red. The one on the right is a lighter blue and a pink. And if you look at the progressive dye proofs, you can see how the blues differ and how the red slash pink differs as well. In 1963, uh, you know, Kennedy, uh, President Kennedy died in 1963, and many countries in the world issued stamps in, in memoriam of, of his death. This set was actually very controversial uh, in the stamp community because of the 50 centavo value. Uh, the 50 centavo value was printed in a pretty small quantity and many people considered it a kind of philatelic faux pas uh, to print this stamp. Meanwhile, there were essays. Uh, they were numbered in pencil from one to 15. Um, I would say there were probably two or three sets like this because I came up with a duplicate page of one of these. And these are numbered one to, one to 15. So you'll see all the different combinations including a larger format versions numbered from 13 to 15. Here's one of which I'm very proud for obvious reasons. This is a commemorative of the International Society of Guatemala Collectors. We have, we have our own stamp. And uh, somehow I found this proof of the overprint on a thin tissue paper. But this is the ISGC stamp. Uh, in 1967, the Pan American Institute of Geography and History was celebrated with these. Um, I'm grouping these together because when the Austrian State Printing Works issued proof booklets, uh, they contained both issues in the booklet. So if you look carefully, at the uh, bottom, for example, uh, of course, the top are all stamps as issued. But on the bottom is an essay, and um, you might take a closer look at the color of the hands. Because, and this is what the booklet looks like. There are many of these booklets that were put out by Strat Druckerei in Vienna. They consisted of sheets of stamps with clear plastic interleaving and they tied with very official looking white and red string. So I have many of these booklets from this particular printer. Remember I told you, look at the hands, look at the hands here. The skin tone basically matches the background. And here you see them mounted in these booklets. Remember I said that this booklet contained the two issues. Here are the two issues. And these are essays. So um, here is another presentation booklet. And again, 
look at the skin color. This was rejected for being too dark. Okay. And then the historic churches air mails. Here are the issued stamps. And here again, the Stretz Dracarai Vienna uh, color trials. As far as I know, many of these color trials are unique. So here's the color trials of each value, the one centavo, two, and so forth. Here's a stamp celebrating Jose de Irisari, again printed in Austria. And below you see the, the page from that booklet, and it shows two versions, uh, two color trials. The color trial on the right is really very similar to the issued stamp, but the one on the left is not. Then uh, Mexico, Guatemala celebrated their relationship. Uh, there were an exchange of visits with uh, Gustavo Ordaz, president of Mexico, and Julio Cesar Mendez Montenegro, the president of Guatemala. So you see on top the issued stamps, and below you see the various essays. And the, the lettering is, is quite different in the essays. If you look at the essays, it simply says Guatemala, Mexico, between Visita and 1967. Very different than the lettering in the issue stamps. And here you see those pages that these come on. These were not from Switzerland, though. These were from Thomas de la Rue in Colombia. Along the same lines, more of those essays. I won't linger on them. I think you get the idea. Now, here's something I picked up very, very recently. Uh, Arnaldo Chivari actually did design the Eleanor Roosevelt stamp. And um, you see the issued stamp. And you see his essay, uh, the essay in the lower left. The stamp was criticized as making Eleanor Roosevelt look, frankly, pretty ugly. She was not a very attractive woman. She was an amazing woman, but not very attractive. And here is uh, Shivari's uh, hand sketch. And it turns out he did a second hand sketch uh, around this. He practiced um, how he was going to write Eleanor in script, and also the formation of the number seven. He experimented with that. And finally, he experimented with the font for Guatemala and the shape of the ribbon that says Correo Area. Now, here's what I call an inexplicable essay. I have these. I know nothing about where they came from, what their intention was. The, spirit, the inscription is in French, l'esprit humain in the spirit of humanity. If anyone knows anything about this, please let me know. And before we finish completely, I just wanted to mention that um, you, you never know what you're gonna find. I'm gonna stop the share for a moment. And uh, let me think how I do this. Uh, I think I might just hold this up to the camera. This is really hard to see. But the stamp is a very common uh, half Quetzal Guatemalan stamp that shows the pyramid at uh, Tikal. And mm -hmm. uh, one of our members uh, just uh, told me about this and I offered to buy it from him. This is another sketch by Arnaldo Chivari uh, of that pyramid taken from a different angle. And um, it, it's, I think it's just wonderful. Uh, it's not mentioned anywhere in the literature but that's part of the adventure of these. On that note, um, I will say that the presentation is over and open to any questions that you might have. Thank you, Michael. Pretty nice series of presentations. So if there are any questions for Michael, please raise your, your hand. I, 
I guess while we wait, I have a couple. Okay. Uh, you showed what that large essay with the sickle and hammer, and it talks about liberation. Uh, was there any political thing going on in Guatemala that they moved from the left side to the right side, or what's the background of? Good question. Uh, let me see if I can um, go back to it. And uh, let's see. Let's stop that. Uh, okay, we're moving in the right direction. Maybe we can all take a closer look at it. Our screen sharing has stopped. Um, okay. Here you go. Right, one more moment. Um, So the message is very clear, liberation from the left side. So that's good. I would assume. Let's see, 1950. Actually, that brings up something quite interesting. Yes, um, there was a coup d'etat in 1954. Okay. And um, I think that the US was behind it. Okay. And I think they threw out the leftists. That's what the, what the U.S. usually does. Uh, they, they throw out the leftists. It's interesting be, because um, in our Guatemala stamp chat that will be coming up in a week or two, we have a presentation on that coup in 1954 uh, by a fellow who was a diplomat in the area. Uh, my friend David Lindwall was a diplomat in Guatemala Little later, later on, and he and uh, Bill Mira, who's giving the presentation, uh, they were both involved in uh, Iran Contra during the Reagan administration, Jeez. and uh, uh, from the Honduran side of the border. And uh, later on, uh, David was a, uh, a diplomat in in Guatemala and has amazing stories to tell. And this fellow, Bill Mira, who worked with Dave, I discovered him rather accidentally. I was on the ham radio set and talking to this fellow who lives in Virginia. And I mentioned about collecting Guatemala stamps. And I mentioned that a friend of mine was a former diplomat from Guatemala. And he said, what was your friend's name? I told him. And he said, I, he and I used to work together. Gee. And so uh, I invited yeah. him. This is going to be a non, a non philatelic lecture. You're all welcome to come. Uh, it's, uh, I think, a week or two away. The Guatemala Society does monthly stamp chats about Guatemala philately. You're all welcome to come. You're welcome to join the ISGC. It's a great, great organization. In any case, um, Getting back to your original question, I, I'm, I'm glad you asked it, Henry, because I think this represents a disrupted uh, left-wing attempt in Guatemala. Yeah, perfect timing. And I, it caught my attention first for the year. This is three years before Cuba and Fidel. Uh, yeah. I know that there was a lot of things going on. That's one question. And there, I have a second question. You show the, the other issue with the visits of the different presidents. And the, you mentioned the president of Peru, the last name Pardo. Is that what is printed in the stamp? Because the actual last name is Prado. Oh, well, hold on a second. It could be, it could be an error. <coughs> Let me, me um, yeah. find that series. Both are correct last names. And maybe just a typo, but it caught my attention too. Let's see, Peru, looking for Peru, that would be this slide, I think. Um, let's see. Um, so, oh, so, let's um, 
really zoom in on this. I won't, won't zoom. Back. If that doesn't work on the lower right corner, you have the scale there. Maybe maybe that could do it. Uh, maybe let's see. Yeah, let's see. Yes, that's it. And which which see what what value was? Uh, I don't know. I think it's the. Oh, ah, come on. We'll take a close look. Maybe the green stamp. Yeah, here you go. Peru was the twenty centavo. Let's try to. Uh, let's see. Prado. Make it even bigger. Oh yeah, here you go. Okay, perfect. I was hoping there was a. A typo actually on the stamp, so that would have done a very interesting. Yeah. So what, what does what, what does the slide say? Pardo. Oh, pardo. It's called the R with the A, which is also a valid oh. Spanish last name, and we also had oh. a president last name Pardo, but much earlier than. Okay. Well, I'm going to correct it. Prado. Let's move this back right. down somewhere. Cool. Thank you, Henry. We uh, corrected the slide on fly. All right, thank you. Uh, Carlos has the, his hand raised. Carlos. Solo quería ampliar en base a tu pregunta. Sí. Lo de la hoja del martillo. Sí, sí. Lo que sucedió es que en el en 1944 hubo una revolución. Okay. Donde se que se eliminó el gobierno que estaba que era dictador en en lo que dice la historia. Y se fue, empezaron a hacer reformas agrarias y, y varios cambios, eh, la autonomía universitaria, autonomía de muchas entidades, pero entre las reformas agrarias empezaron a afectar la United Fruit Company, que ya afectaba a intereses norteamericanos. Entonces, oh. en el 54, ya en, con ayuda de los americanos, planearon derrocar a lo que era la revolución de 10 años antes y se llamó la contrarrevolución. Entonces, por eso decía que se, como se estaban inclinando hacia la izquierda, supuestamente, en estos sellos se mira la hoz y el martillo destruyéndose por el, sí. por el martillo. Pero fue por los intereses de los americanos, de la United Fruit Company y diferentes que ya se veían afectados por las reformas agrarias y de otro tipo. Claro. Gracias por ese contexto. Está, está, me, me llamó muchísimo la atención, por eso lo... Sí, es lo interesante lo... porque aquí nunca hubo un eh, enfoque de los comunistas, pero como les vio afectado a los americanos, y ellos eran a mí, eh, eran pro el gobierno que colocaron, entonces por eso ya los nuevos ellos eran como un enfoque diferente. Perfecto, gracias. ¿Did you get all that, Michael? <laughs> no. <laughs> I summarize. Uh, Carlos said that in 1944, the, there was an, a president who started uh, issuing all sort of uh, agricultural reforms, and those affected the United Fruit Company. Or the, and 10 years later, because the American interests were compromised, that's where the second part that you mentioned about the Americans having an intervention occurred. So, that, that, that's the whole story that now we can put together. Very nice, oh, yeah, very thank nice you. connection there. Yeah, Carlos, uh, thank you so much. Very, very interesting. I really appreciate your, your uh, in information. Okay, Michael, it's, it's a great thing. Your uh, exhibition is so great. Wonderful. ¿Alguna otra pregunta? ¿Any other question over there? I don't see any hands raised. Okay, well, uh, one final question uh, for you, Michael. Yes. We have seen the five parts. I have seen the five parts and enjoy them very much. And I'm very impressed with the number of essays and proof that you have from the entire 
collection of Guatemala, you know, typically people focus into different periods just because it's what is available. But it is pretty impressive to see a entire country pretty much throughout from the beginning to current dates with such a comprehensive collection of proofs and essays. So of course this is a lifetime search and all that, but, and, and you kind of touch a little bit into the quality assurance in certain years, but how difficult has been for you to put together this, this collection? Well, I think I did not originally intend to put together a collection of essays and proofs. What drove me to it was the purchase of a wonderful collection that was part of the famous Recoy collection yes. of Guatemala. Um, most of the very expensive, rare early material sold a long time ago. But when I was able to purchase the modern material, which was something like 10 volumes, uh, that got me started. When I saw that there was so much unique material in it, it started me on the search. And now I have people all over, and I hope Leo Ficina will do this as well. If anyone sees an essay or proof, let me know. I, I pay top dollar for it, <laughs> and um, I will buy anything I don't have. Thank you. And do, do you have any knowledge how this Mr. Ricoy put together that collection? Because that was also the same endeavor going through the whole thing. Yeah, it, 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 was, it was a lifetime of his work. He was very well known as a collector. He's one of the classic collectors. And uh, I think that the early literature uses a lot of his collection okay. for illustration, just as the latest handbook will use a lot of mine, I, I believe. Was he in Guatemala or somewhere else? Oh, I'm trying to recall. I don't think so. I don't, I don't remember. Okay. But you can go to old auction catalogs. I have a lot of old auction catalogs with his material, which um, is really worthwhile looking at. And some of that material will probably end up in the handbook too, uh, depending upon how much we, we expand it. That's always an open question because there are no limits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have to stop somewhere. That's true. Very impressive. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll look forward to, again later in the year to do a presentation here on how to bring handbooks back from the dead. I'm doing a presentation at least three times before I'll be doing it with uh, this group. So it'll, it should be well developed by that time. Fantastic. Looking forward to it. There are a couple of initiatives going on here within the members. One of them is in Peru that we want to do some updates to, not to the catalog, but we want to develop a encyclopedia type of what Guatemala has. So that will be a fantastic thing to get. Well, you know, I'd be happy to uh, provide advice at least to any of the organizations connected with Mio Oficina. Uh, maybe avoid some of the mistakes I made that have caused extra work. Fantastic. Thank you, Michael. Well, with that, thanks again. Y el día de mañana.